give him praise in this house, for God is truly worthy uh, to be praised. Amen. As we kick off our first night, our revival services, I don't know about you, but I've been looking forward all day long, amen, to being in revival service on tonight. For I do know God has a blessing for you and for me in this place. Amen. 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 Come on, help me do this congregation song, and our brother will be ready now to lead us in our devotional time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Oh, Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let, oh, everywhere I go, you know, I'm going to let it shine, oh, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let oh shine, shine, shine. I'm gonna let it shine, oh shine. I'm gonna let it shine, 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 shine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, you know. Come on, sing it till you get happy. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Come on, give God another great hand. Amen. Anybody got a light that you're going to let the let the shine tonight? Praise his holy name. Our deacons, our brethren is going to come and lead us now in our evening devotion. Thank you for this opportunity to come and praise and serve him. Wish up his holy name. Scripture reading will be coming from Psalms 150. That's Psalms 150. And it reads as follows. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. 
Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sounds of trumpet. Praise him with lutes and harps. Praise him with tremble and dance. Praise him with screens of instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon. Long ago, I didn't know nothing about Jesus and his love. I had heard about him, but this matter that comes from above. In this life of sin, I can no longer stand. I asked my mother, how do I get to know the man? She said, you must be. Don't you see, you got to be. Born again, oh, you must have that fine Holy Ghost, that burning thing that keeps the proud return, that kind of religion you cannot cause it makes you move, it makes you shout, it makes you cry when it's rich, Lord, I got my hand right. In the wine it changed my soul's been anchored in my Jesus name. You know I'm filled with it, free from sin. I know I've been born again. Whoa, you must have that fine Holy Ghost, that burning thing that keeps the power with turn that kind of religion. You cannot conceal. It makes you move, it makes you shout, it makes you cry when it's real, Lord. I've got my hand right in the wine and chain. My soul's been anchored in my Jesus' name. You know I'm filled with it, free from sin. I know I've been born again. Born again. You cannot conceive that you have to believe it truly within. Born again. We thank you, Brother Johnson, for that song. Let us go to God in prayer now. Most heavenly, gracious Father, in your darling Son, Jesus' name, we come again, Father, with many thanks upon our hearts. First of all, and most of all, Father, we want to thank you for this day, Father. Then, Father, in your blessed Son, Jesus' name, we want to thank you for our pastor, Father. Father, we ask that you touch him from the sole of the feet to the crown of his head and give him the wisdom that he is standing in need of, Father. Then, Father, we ask you to look among first high part congregation, Father. And if there be sickness among this congregation, we ask that you have your way with this congregation, Father. And then, Father, we ask you to visit in church, have your way with them too as well, Father. And then, Father, we ask you to go to the highways and to the byways of life. And those that don't know you in the pond of their sin, we ask that you have your way with them as well, Father. Then, Father, we ask you to go to the prison and to the four walls, Father, and touch those that don't know you in the pond of their sin. Father, in your daughter's son, Jesus' name, we ask you, Father, just have your way in the night in this service, Father. Give us the wisdom that you'll have us to receive in this word, Father. We ask that you touch the pastor that's bringing the word tonight, Father. Send him to a death that we might receive what it is that you'll have us to receive, Father. We can't thank you enough. Father, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do, Father, these blessings and the many more blessings in your daughter's son, Jesus' name, we all pray and we all do say, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is, this, this is a time to really just, just get excited. This is revival. Amen. This is the time to get excited. Amen. Amen. This is revival. Come to, to get revived. Amen. Amen. To put some in. Amen. <laughs> to put some inside of us. Amen. To keep us going. Amen. It's revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm excited about it. You know, we've been hiding behind these old ma masters for a long time. Amen. We've been just hiding, but I like to hide behind somebody who's going to help me. Amen. I like to hide behind somebody who's going who gonna to help me when I'm sick. Amen. I like to hide behind somebody who's going to help me when I'm weak. Amen. I like to hide behind Jesus. Amen. So help me sing this song. I 
I'm gonna hide behind under the mountain. I'm gonna hide behind mountain. I'm gonna hide behind, hide behind the mountain. I'm going.
Amen. Amen. <laughs> since, he went, since he went old school. <laughs> We're going to try a little old school a cappella as well. All right. Why are y'all ready? I don't possess houses or lands. <laughs> Fine clothes or jewelry, uh -huh. sorrows and cares in this old world, my lot seems to be. But I have a Christ who paid the price way back on Calvary, and Christ is on. All in all, this world to me. Now this is in the book. You all can join us, 532. Christ is on. He's everything to me. Christ is on. Christ is all in all this world to me. One verse. There is some folks who look and long for this world's riches. There are some folk who look for power, position to. But I have a Christ all in my life. This makes me happy. For Christ is all, all in all. This world to me. Sing, y'all. Yes. Christ. Yeah, he's every, everything. Yes, Christ is all. Oh, he rules the land and sea. Christ is all. Oh, and without him, let there not be. me. Yes, Christ is all. Without him. Yes, Christ. Then I'd be Christ is all, all in all. This world to me. Well, amen. 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 Certainly, Christ is all. Amen. This world to me, for without Him, I can do nothing. Amen. Thank you, brethren, for leading us in our devotion and our choir for giving us our song. And we're just grateful to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. The first time we've had revival in almost three years. Yeah. Amen. And I feel it's a time of refreshing, a time of a renewal. Amen. And a time to be revived. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I stand in the need of some refreshing. Amen. I stand to be renewed. Amen. Amen. I think uh, Paul said, let us be uh, renewed. Amen. 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 I, by, by your mind ought to be renewed. And I think if uh, 
if, you, if your driver's license ought to be renewed, amen, every now and again, your mind ought to be renewed, amen. So we want to be renewed and refreshed as well as revived on tonight. Thank God for all of you in this place on tonight. Our scripture reading to come from Hosea chapter 6 and after read the uh, Reverend Coleman will lead us in our, in our prayer tonight in our pulpit devotion. Hosea chapter number 6. Amen. Beginning at verse 1, you'll find these biblical words recorded there. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has smited and he will bind us up. And after two days will he revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. There shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And it shall come unto us as the rain. As the latter and the former rain upon this earth. These past three years, we've been torn. Amen. We've been burdened. Amen. But Jesus says, come on back, and I will restore you. I'll raise you up. i bind you up wherever you've been cut at. Amen. You, where we've been wounded, Jesus said, now come on now, and let us return back unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, Reverend Coleman is going to come and lead us in our prayer time. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, I come as humble as I know how. And I thank you for all the many wonderful blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us. Thank you for watching over us all night long while we slumbered and slept. You kept us from hurt, harm, and danger. And right early this morning, you touched us with the finger of love. And we awoke to a big portion of health and strength. You bless us with food and clothing and shelter. Been with us all day long. And Father, you give us a mind to come out to the house of prayer one more time. Father, I ask you to bless this pastor and his wife. Bless the deacon board, the trustees, the mothers, the choir, musician, ushers. Father, all the people that are gathered here tonight, bless them in a special way. Father, have mercy on the sick everywhere, poor and needy, careless and the unconcerned, those that are in bereavement. And Father, uh, forgive us for all of our sins and help us to do the things that's pleasing in your sight. Father, bless the man that's going to preach your word. Let your word convict, illuminate minds that someone might understand. Come crying, what must I do to be saved? Amen. And Father, thank you most of all for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for all the sins of the world. You said you was going away to prepare a place for us. You said in my father's house, a many mansions. And one day you coming back after a church without spot or wrinkle. Help us to be ready to go to that place where there be no more sickness, no more dying, no more crying. Nothing but peace, joy, and happiness in my Father's house. And I thank you for it. I ask it all in the name of your Son, Jesus, for his sake I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Coleman. God bless you. Amen. So that you might feel welcome in this place. We're going to ask that uh, Sister Debbie really would come and extend welcome uh, to you on tonight. Amen. So that you'll feel. Amen. I know you felt welcome when you came in, Sister Matt. Amen. But uh, Sister Debbie's going to just extend welcome to us tonight. behalf of Pastor Davis and our First Hyde Park Church family, we want to extend to you a welcome. Glad that you're here in the house with us tonight. We hope that the word 
and the songs you hear be a blessing to you. Again, you are welcome, and we are the little church with a big heart, where a stranger meets a friend, and Jesus Christ meets us all. Welcome. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Debbie. Amen. 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 I'm sure now that we feel a little bit better. Amen. Since we have been welcomed into this into this house. Amen. God bless you again. Thank you again. I'm again excited about uh, what God is getting ready to do in this house uh, through our preacher tonight, my friend and my bosom buddy. Amen. The right Reverend Elder Robert McDuffie. Amen. He got his sidekick with him tonight. Sister Virginia Ann. Amen. Virginia Ann is in the house. Amen. Come on, give Sister Virginia Ann McDuffie a hand. Amen. Amen. So we know that he's ran and ready to go. Amen. Before we do that, we just want to go ahead and do a little house cleaning here. Amen. Come on in. There he is right there. Come on, let's stand and welcome our, our pastor tonight. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you tonight. Amen. We're going to make ready now to wish the Lord and I give him. Amen. And after that, we'll be ready to go a little for, for, forward. Uh, in the service uh, again tonight, uh, you can give various ways to this ministry. You can uh, mail it in. Those who may be watching online through YouTube, through Facebook Live, you can mail it in. Uh, your revival offering to 2750 Coleman Avenue uh, here in the city of Jackson, Mississippi 39213, or you can go online, go to Ghibli Fire, and there look at the First High Park MB Church. There you can give your revival offering right there. Uh, if you just want to drive around and drop it off, amen, our brother will meet you in the back, amen, and you can give it right there. But those that are in the house, amen, we ask now as we prepare now to bring our offering, amen, to the Lord, our deacons, our trustees are going to come now and make ready to receive our, our offering. God and our Father, we thank you now for the gifts. We thank you for the giver. And Lord God, we ask now that it may be used for the benefit at which it was taken for the building of your kingdom and the spreading of your holy and divine word. In Jesus' name, we do pray in the saints of God said amen. 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 God bless you, brother, and thank you so very, so very much. I'm going to take this opportunity now to introduce and present our guest for tonight and after you have presented him, our choir will bless us and sung, and he will come and bless us what God has given him. I'm privileged tonight to have uh, a friend as you go through life. I know a lot of preachers, know a lot of pastors, but we are, we are associates, amen, but there's, a, there's only just a few friends, and uh, I consider the pastor Robert McDuffie and Sister McDuffie uh, as our friend. They are the only one that my wife and I has went on vacation with together. Amen. So that when you go on vacation together, wherever you go, stay right there. <laughs> and they are, they are my friends. They are my brothers. I've known them down through the years. We are 
our brothers and, and, and brother beloved, and I, I'm privileged and honored to have him to come to share uh, with our church family tonight. He is the proud and the eminent pastor of the Taylor's Hill uh, Missionary Baptist Church there in New Hebron, Mississippi. I think he's been there 20 years. I believe he just celebrated 20 years of service there at the Hill. Amen. And uh, doing a marvelous job. He is the moderator of the Simpson County uh, Baptist Association. In fact, amen, he succeeded me. Amen, amen. When I left, he stepped in. Amen. And I'm grateful to have him as uh, a friend. Pastor McDuffie just stand tonight, and I want to present to some, uh, introduce to others our friend, our brother, our beloved, the right Reverend Elder, Pastor Robert McDuffie. Can we just stand all over the building and give him a great, 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 great first half of a round of applause and let him know that he's welcome in this house. Amen. Amen. Now our choir is going to come and bless us, and after they have finished, uh, the next force will be dead. I'll pass to Robert McDuffie. Put your hands together. I know the 
Let every heart say amen. amen. Let every heart say amen again. Amen. Truly, we thank the Lord once again just to be in the house of the Lord one more time to give him all the glory and the praise. Truly, we do honor the Lord on, on this night. Thank God for your beloved pastor, Dr. Terry L. Davis, and his beloved wife on tonight. And we do honor him for, for allowing me just to come and share a word from the Lord. And then also Dr. Dennis and Reverend Taylor and Reverend Coleman, we thank the Lord for them also on tonight. And truly we thank the Lord for my beloved wife. She's here tonight. You honor the Lord for her. I hardly ever go anywhere without her. She always by my side. That's a good thing. Because I'm trying to obtain favor from the Lord. And so we thank the Lord for each and every one of you. We thank God for my beloved church. Amen. Some are here on tonight. And we're going to ask Taylor here, just wave your hand at us. And my cousin from the home ch church, uh, Deacon Everett, he's with us. Always just good to have somebody, amen, that will come and, and follow along with you in the things of God. But I'm just grateful unto the Lord for the Lord allowing us to assemble once again, on the banner of the resurrected Christ. He has allowed us to come and just enter into his gates and do it with so much thanksgiving. And we are rejoicing in the Lord. But I know this is a revival and we are asking the Lord to Lord will thou revive us again that our people may rejoice in thee. And that's what we are doing on tonight. We are asking the Lord to revive us. And the reason why we are asking the Lord to revive us so we can rejoice in him or in thee. Because he is our strength. That's why he said the word rejoice in the Lord. This I say, rejoice again. Just good to rejoice in them. So if you be so kind not to hold you too long tonight, you know, we ain't been in revival in a, in a while, so just good to be here. <laughs> Turn me in your Bibles to 2 King, 20th chapter. We're going to just take three of these verses and, and work from there. If your custom is to stand, stand. If not, uh, you can remain seated. As long as you're here, it's good with me. You'll find these biblical words recorded in 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, 1 through 3. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Look at verse 2. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I walk before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah well so. Well, just share on tonight, just for a few minutes. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. 
I believe all of us here on tonight can testify. And if we had the way of saying, look at your neighbor, touch your neighbor, we can all testify and say that the struggle is real. There are many people throughout the Bible that can testify and say that the struggle is real. Even today we can say, even us today can say the struggle is real, but through it all, God can handle our entire struggle when we give it over to him. The Bible says in, in Job 13 and 15, Job said it like this, though he slay me, he said, yet will I trust in him. Not only will he trust in the Lord, but he said that, but I will maintain my own way before the Lord. Job understood something about struggle because Job had lost everything that he had. Lost his family, lost his finance, and he almost lost his wife. But through it all, uh, uh, Job was able to stand the test of time because his faith was not in his struggle. And my brothers and sisters, our faith can't not be in our struggle, but our faith must be in the Lord. Because faith is what pleases God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. He also said, for I know that my redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm or scar this body, he said, yet in my flesh, I see God. Yeah. Other words, my brothers and sisters, when we are faced with struggle, when we are faced with trial and, and tribulation, we must take our cares and our burden to the Lord. Because the Lord can handle our struggle. He can handle any situation that we can put before him. I know the struggle is real. We can look here in our city of Jackson. We, we see the struggle uh, with the water situation. Amen. We see the struggle uh, with the crime all around us. We see the struggle with economic uh, depression all around us. But yet and still, there is a God. And we can look to him, the Bible tells us, look unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So in other words, my brothers and sisters, we struggle with different things. Uh, we struggle with fear. There may be some here are struggling with fear even on tonight, but you still here. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a what? Sound mind. In other words, we may you know the pandemic has called a, a lot of people to be fearful in many areas, and they have a need to be. But yet, through it all, God is still on the throne. Amen. He never changed. The Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God that, that brought the children of Israel across the Red Sea. He, he's the same God, amen, that will make a crooked road straight. He's the same God, amen, can help us out of our dilemmas. And yet and still, we can say the struggle is real. We can look at it, but we can still say, but God. Help me say, but God. God can do the impossible. Amen. All things are possible to him that believes. In other words, my brothers and sisters, I know it seems like uh, we have no hope and, and we are saying that, that the struggle is, is real and it is real, but through it all, we have a God that can get in the midst of the struggle with us. 
And that, that's the good news that we have on today. I, I may be struggling, but, but I have a God can help me. Amen. He can help me through my, my dark days. He can help me through my depression. He, he can help me through my suicidal thought. But I first must understand I got to trust in the Lord and, and lean not to my own understanding. But all that way, I got to acknowledge him because, amen, he's going to direct my path. So we struggle with self-image. And we struggle sometimes with our own self. Amen, how we look. We may be too big, maybe too small, but we all struggle with some type of self-image. But when you identify with God, amen, God has declared that he made us in his image, in his, in his likeness. Uh, other words, amen, when you know that your faith is in the Lord, it keeps you from struggling with your self-image because you understand who you are, that you are beautifully and wonderful made. Not only, my brothers and sisters, we struggle with finding the right person in our relationships. We find, uh, Amy, we're struggling with finding the right uh, 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 relationship. We struggle in those areas, and we can testify with one of the, the women in the Bible by the woman with the, uh, at the well. She, she began to struggle because when she came to Jesus, Jesus said, look, Amy, where is your husband? He said, where is your husband? And she said, I have none. Amen. And my brother and sister, she struggled with it because he said, yeah, you have had five and the one you got now ain't yours. Other words, sometimes we as people, we struggle with relationships. And, 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 but God can help us if, if we allow him to mold and to transform us. Y'all just walk with me just a little for longer. We struggle with managing our money. Come on, say the struggle is real. Hey, hey, I'm trying, I'm trying, and I'm trying, amen, to find you and to locate you tonight, amen. Somewhere in this sermon, amen, it should locate you and that you can understand that the struggle is real. Some folk just can't manage the money. Amen, they get it and tomorrow is gone. Amen. We can't manage, but we struggle in those areas. We, we struggle with, with, with family matters. We, we struggle with our brothers and our sisters sometimes. But through it all, God can help us in our struggle. Then, then my brothers and sisters, we struggle with addiction. Uh, whatever addiction you may have, I don't know, but sometimes we struggle. But the good thing about it is, if you're here tonight and you, if you're struggling with addiction, you're in the right place at the right time to receive a right now blessing. Because the Bible declared that them that are whole need not a physician, but them that are not whole, amen, they need the Lord. So other words, if you are struggling with some type of, uh, of addiction, God can help you because, amen, he can help you because he, make, he can make you whole. So my brothers and sisters, there was a woman in, in the Bible that had an issue of blood for, for 12 long years. Let me say 12 long years. That's a struggle. Now, she had this issue of blood for a very long time. Can't you see this woman? I need you to, amen, paint a picture in your mind, struggling with this issue day after day, going to doctor after doctor. All the money she had, she done spent it and gave it to these physicians. This woman is struggling. There might be somebody here tonight uh, uh, struggling just like this woman with something. You've been struggling with it for 12 long years, and she done did everything that she can do. Yeah. She done spent all the money, then went to the doctors, amen. She done got to a place where she had, amen, nowhere to go but to Jesus. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, and tonight, 
she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. She said, I know my struggle will be over. So my brothers and sisters, when she got there, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And when she touched the hem of his garment, he said, man, who touched me? The disciples said, all these folks around, amen. He said, I know somebody touched me because the virtue is gone out of my body. And he began to talk to this woman, said, be a good comfort. He said, thy faith has made thee whole. If we just have faith at the grain of a mustard seed, we can speak unto the mountain, and the mountain shall be removed. But here, my brothers and sisters, not to hold you too long with my brothers and sisters tonight, Hezekiah had a struggle too. And we go to our text tonight, Hezekiah. Amen had a struggle. And the struggle that he had was, the Bible says that in those days, it said he was sick unto death. Now that's a struggle. Amen. He is sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah said unto him, he said, look, set thine house in order. Oh, my God. Uh, other word, amen, amen, uh, amen, Isaiah got his attention, amen, and sometimes when we struggle, God will use our struggler to get our attention. Ah, my brothers and sisters, he said, set that house in order for, for thou shalt die and not live. Oh, when you heard, amen, something of that magnitude. I, I, I can look into Hezekiah's uh, life and begin to say and begin to see how he began to aim and tremble within himself. But God, but God, he began to, he said, look, Hezekiah said, look, I can just take this indictment. I can take this and, 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 and receive it and go on by my way and just leave this world. But in other, other words, he wasn't ready to leave. The Bible said, this is what he did. The Bible said he turned his face to the wall. And, and he began to pray. He turned his face uh, to the wall and began to pray unto the Lord. And he began to say something to the Lord. See, when we got struggled, that's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Other words, you got to say something. You can't get quiet in the midst of your struggle. I said, you can't get quiet in the midst of your struggle. Amen. He began to say in verse 3, he said, I beseech thee, O Lord. He said, look now. He said, remember. How many of us can say that? He said, remember how I walked before thee in truth. He said, I walked before you in truth. And not only did I walk before you in truth, he said, but I had a perfect heart. In other words, he had something to stand on. Uh, he had something to be alone. So he began to talk to the Lord. He began to pray to the Lord and began to ask the Lord, do you remember, Lord, how I walked before you? How I didn't have a, a, a bad heart. See, there's some folks here tonight, amen, your heart ain't bad, amen. Sometimes folk think just because you're struggling, you got a bad heart. It's a whole lot of good folks that are struggling with a good heart. But tonight, if you want God to revive you, amen, there's a couple of things you got to do. You got to turn your face to the wall. And you got to tell the Lord, 
Lord, you remember by my bedpost, every night I get down on my knees and I begin to talk to you, Lord. And Lord, I need you to show up and show out in my midst. You remember, Lord, when I was in the kitchen and I broke out in a praise. Do you remember, Lord, in my bedroom, I have built me a altar where I lay prostrate before you. Lord, do you remember what I've been going through and I've been seeking you? I've been seeking your faith. Do you remember? And you know I'm struggling, Lord. But God just put you in a position to cry out to him. And when we cry out to the Lord, the Bible says he's going to hear us. My brothers and sisters, he began to cry out to the Lord and say, How I walk before thee in a perfect heart. And look what he said. And have done that which is good in thy sight. He said, I have done that which was good. Now, what you are doing tonight is good. You in the house of the Lord. Amen. You serving God. You're in a place that you can worship God. Amen. You are doing something that is good. And the Bible has declared, oh, taste and see, that the Lord is good. How many know he's good? Amen. The Lord is good. And we can testify and say, I know that the Lord is good. So through Hezekiah prayer, and this is what the Lord gave me. And I'm going to let y'all go. Through the prayers of Hezekiah, what he experienced was revival. Oh, y'all missed that, didn't you? Amen. You got to look real deep to see it. What he experienced was revival. He said, look, man, I have got a terrible indictment. But I, I can't wait till I get to church. Amen. I can't wait, amen, till they open the doors of the church. I, I got to experience revival right now. So he began, he, he began, my brothers and my sisters, amen, he began, my brothers and sisters, to experience revival at home. And that's the next phase. If we want revival uh, in the church, amen, we're going to have revival at the house uh, oh my brother and sister uh, what I'm saying is you're going to have to start praying before you get here amen you're going to have to be on fire before you get here so he experienced revival and by experience revival amen where he was amen Hezekiah amen what happened his posture changed Come on, help me say his pastor changed. This, this is what the Lord gave me. He said his pastor changed because when he turned his face to the wall, other words, his attitude, amen, changed. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes God will use things, amen, to a change our attitude. And his, his pastor began to change. His, his concept, his makeup began to change because he began to use another discipline. Sensation, he began to do something that he never done before. Uh, amen. Most times he, when he prayed, he probably just got on his knees. But but this time uh, he turned his face to the wall. So in other words, his, his posture changed. Not only did his posture change, but his his priority changed. Uh, no longer, amen. I, I got to wait and see what God going to do. I got I to gotta get in contact with God right now. Other words, amen. Sometimes we got to put God first. Well, not sometimes. All the time, we got to put God first. Because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Other words, his priority change. It's good when our priority change. See, sometimes we can be going away from God. See, don't, don't worry about the folk coming back in. 
sooner or later. Amen. God going to get their attention. The struggle going to get so real that they got to find their way back to the house of the Lord because they're going to need some help. They're going to need some help because this is where we get our help from. Because when we come in here and we begin to worship God, amen, God got help for us. My brothers and my sisters, my priority is in the right place. I can't wait till I get to the house of the Lord. I'm just like ASAP. ASAP said when I looked at all my enemies and I saw all the prosperity of my enemies. Good God Almighty. But ASAP said when I came into the sanctuary, everything began to shift. One thing about it, see, you got to tell folk, those that you that watching online, I know it's good online, but every now and then, you need to come to the sanctuary and feel the doodads of the Holy Spirit uh, walking up and down these aisles. Uh, see, here's the priority change. Uh, see, God can t touch you where you need to touch. Uh, if, what do you think uh, if the woman with this your blood, uh, if she can't come to Jesus, uh, where will she be? Uh, but we got to come to our place where God has anointed. Uh, see, the house of God been anointed. It's been set aside because we are standing on holy ground. Uh, so you got to know that this holy ground we stand in anything can happen when you stand on holy ground come on somebody you may need a heater like Hezekiah amen God can do it tonight if you need to be revived just lift your hands and Lord revive me right now Say, so Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation I know the struggle is real because the struggle is real in my life I look out over the congregation I see so many people that have wandered away from the house of the Lord and sometimes I look and say that I got grieved in my heart but yet and still I know the struggle is real but I look up into God and say my redemption draweth nigh I begin to look to him who is the author and the finisher of my faith I look unto him because I know one one day it's going to turn around because I know we keep on pressing our way we're pressing our way through God going to turn it around he going to turn everything around but he just need a few cushites he just need a few people he need the remnant he need those that don't mind giving God the praise and we can give God the praise he'll give you praise and he'll turn your struggle into a blessing I know he will. Is there anybody here? Know that the Lord will. Know that the Lord can. Know that he can make a way out of no way. Is there anybody here? Know that God can do the expectation. He can do exceedingly, abundantly. All that we ask to think according to the power they're working in us but all I need is somebody that will open their mouth and begin to talk to the Lord because the Bible said bless the Lord oh my soul in all that is within me bless his holy name I will bless the Lord at all times good God Almighty come on somebody say I know that the struggle is real but God I'm gonna say but God can bring me out of my struggle is there anybody here know that he can is there anybody here know that he will hallelujah his posture changed not only did his posture change but his priority changed but the last one his position changed hallelujah what you say brother preacher I said his position 
begin to change. His life changed because when he talked to the Lord, the Lord told the prophet before he got out of the out of course, he said, go tell Hezekiah, good God Almighty. He said, I will deliver you. I will make a way out of no way. I will add 15 years to your life. How many you know his position change? Good God Almighty. And don't you know we may be in a position right now that we think our struggle is bigger than God. But our struggle is not bigger than God. Because the good thing about it, the Lord will. Hallelujah. We struggle with the sickness. We struggle with diseases. We struggle with loneliness. We struggle with so many things. But God, don't get in the struggle. I know He will. I know He can. Good God Almighty. Just ask the Hebrew boy. I said, just ask the Hebrew boys. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, amen. Just ask the Hebrew boys. Uh, he said, turn it up. Uh, the fire uh, sometimes hotter uh, than it should have been. Uh, and he threw the boys in. But look what happened. Uh, amen. He got in the struggle uh, with the Hebrew boys. He got in the struggle with the Hebrew boys. As I see four in the fire, and one looked like the Son of God. I don't know about you, but God is in my struggle. I said, God is in my struggle. And the reason why he's in my struggle, because the Bible said over in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, he said, our God is a consuming fire. Other word, he got in the fire. He consumed the fire. And they come out looking better than uh, before they went in. Uh, that's how God is. Uh, come on somebody uh, and shout out uh, but God. Come on on this side. Uh, shout out uh, but God. Uh, God can do it. Uh, I said God will get in this struggle. Uh, I know he will. Uh, I know he can. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, from Zion, because the God that he said, he will get in there if we keep on staying with the Lord. Hallelujah. I got one more. Y'all remember Peter, don't you? Peter was struggling. Good God Almighty. They done put him in prison. Then put him on lockdown. He wasn't just in the prison. He was in lockdown. He was in the lowest of low. But look at God. The church went down without seasons. And they prayed for Peter. They prayed for Peter. And all of a sudden, God got in his struggle. God got in his struggle. Sinner angel took him through them gates. All of a sudden, he shows up at the prayer meet. Hallelujah. A young girl go to the dome. Is that Peter? Good God Almighty. They thought she was mad. But Peter done showed up at John Mark house because the Lord got in the struggle. Hallelujah. I know the corona is all around us. But I'm waiting on God. When God get in our struggle, he gonna take corona and send him back where it came. Back to the pits of hell. Good God Almighty. But he said, I'm looking for some folks 
that don't mind crying out to God. I'm looking for some folks. Don't mind talking to God. Because if you look at it real good, the Bible said that he heard Hezekiah prayer. He heard the prayer. And when God heard the prayer of the righteous, he said, hey, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show out. I just need some folks some around first high point just get down on your knees every now and then and say Lord thank you for the struggle hallelujah because I know you're going to get in the struggle with us is there anybody here going to let God have his way and begin to say Lord I know I'm struggling hallelujah I just need you to fill in the blank and say I'm struggling with this I'm struggling with this and tell God about your struggle and watch God change things. Is there anybody here going to help me close? Good God Almighty, because Jesus, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, good God Almighty, he said, let this cup pass from me. He said, be your will. Let it pass from me. Good God Almighty. But God got in the struggle. He said, you got to go all the way. If you don't go all the way, good God Almighty, my Redeemer won't live. But he had to go and conquer the grave. He had to go and conquer death because Jesus was in the struggle just like all of us but God but God he's in three days I shall rise again is there anybody know that he hung dead and he died but God what did he do he raised him on the third day why did he do it he did it with all power not some power but all power come on somebody we need God power the power of the Holy Ghost the power to change things the power to talk right the power to look right. He raised Jesus up. Go, 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 my God. Early one Sunday morning, he got up out of that grave. Come on, somebody help me, sir. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. All. I said, all. All, 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 all. All power. Good God Almighty. And what he gonna do for you? He gonna raise you up out of your struggle. And you gonna look back at your struggle. You gonna say, this too shall pass. Is there anybody here gonna help me praise? The struggle, the struggle. He in it with us. We can testify. We can shout glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way out of no way. The struggle is real. But God. But God can see us through it all. He can see us through it. And some of you can just testify. You can testify and say, yes, he did. He done saw us through the struggle. The struggle of the pandemic. 
The struggle of crying. The struggle of the water crisis. But look at God. God is still moving. Because when I look out there and see your face, I know the struggle is real. But you got something to add to it. You are saying, but God. Would you stand with me tonight? This is revival and the Lord have brought you here to revive you, to strengthen you, to help you because he's in the helping business. That's what he does. He come to minister unto us and to help us through our situation, to strengthen us, to build us up. To give us a fresh wind. This is what revival is all about. The freshness of God. The power of God. That he will renew us. Rejuvenate us. Restore us. Through the word of God. That's why will thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice Indy, show us some mercy. So if you're here tonight, not to hold you long, and if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, it's a good opportunity to come. It's a good opportunity to give your heart to the Lord. Even in the midst of the struggle. That Jesus, he is real. If you're in the house saved, you may, somebody here may need prayer. So I'm struggling with different situations in my life. And I just need prayer. Strength along the journey. If you're here tonight, will you come? Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Thank you. You, you say I'm saved, but I just got struggle. But God can give you help in the midst of your struggle. Come on, baby. Thank you, Jesus. He's here. The Lord is. His presence is here. Thank you. Would there be another? Maybe somebody is struggling with some type of sickness. Struggling. And he's saying, Lord, when, Lord? When, Lord, you're going to touch me? When, Lord, you're crying out. you like the woman with the issue of blood. You're struggling. But your faith, 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 the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence not seen. When we got faith in God, God can touch. God can heal. God can deliver. If you hear, will there be another before I begin to pray? I'm going to pray for these. That's all. Doctor, you want to pray or you want me to pray? <laughs> Hallelujah. Just to, just to, we want to be revived. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, we're we here. God already done did a work through the preaching. I feel yokes being broken. I, I feel burden and shackles being broken. Because he said in his word, he was keep us. In perfect peace. Thank you, brother. Look at these families coming together. He will keep us in perfect peace. Who mind? You stayed on the Lord. That's what we're here tonight for. That the Lord will say He will. Come on, say He will. What will He do? He will revive us. 
He'll restore us even in the midst of our struggle. I like that, brother. But he said, look, I just need a few folk that will cry out to me. Say right there, baby. Keep this thing in there. Say that song. I don't mind. <laughs> Jesus is here, isn't he? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, she have testified and said the struggle is real. But God, touch her body. Touch her body, Lord. Touch her body, touch her body. From the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Give us some relief, God. Give us some relief, God. Do it now. In a mighty way. Lord, we thank you. Touch this man. Touch him, I pray. Touch this daughter. Touch her, I pray. Oh, glory. Touch, I pray. Touch, I pray. Touch this vessel, God. Touch, I pray. Touch, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you right now. God, they have testified and say that the struggle is real. But God, through it all, through the ups and downs, God said, you're going to turn the you're going to turn the page tonight. You're going to flip over to the next page. And the next page is going to be a page of, of good and not evil. That he will show you the expected end. My brothers and sisters, I come in the name of Jesus praying for those that have to offer. Some are burdened down. Some are struggling with many things, God. But God, we declare according to your word. That your word destroy every yoke. Your word destroy every bondage. Because you have declared God. With your strength we are healed. And we thank you Lord for your healing power. We thank you Lord for delivering us. We thank you Lord for moving in our midst even on tonight. And God we are going to give you all the glory and all the praise. We ask our lead blessing. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and thank God. This way I want to thank him. You've been so, so good. So good. Yeah. 
you been so so good Lord I I just Oh, you say my my soul say my soul. You say, my, my soul, Lord, I do thank. One more time, then lift your hand and open your mouth to Lord, I just want to thank you. Come on, one more time. Lord, I just want. Hallelujah. Come on, put them hands together. Like you trying to beat the devil's head. And give God glory in this place. Hallelujah. The struggle is real. But God, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor McDuffie, for preaching us tonight to God got the news. Amen. We got our praise tonight. That's what revival is all about. Amen. If you're blessed tonight, come on, give the Lord another great hand. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Pastor McDuffie. I don't know about you, but it's, it's nothing like being in church where the saints of God is real and the anointing of God is flowing. Amen. No matter what you came in, think about it. It's all over now. God, God done renewed that thing. Amen. He done, he done made a way, and you know he done made a way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor McDuffie. Thank you so very, so very much for blessing us tonight. And certainly, we certainly, we certainly, amen, want to leave tonight knowing that the struggle is real but God. Amen. We'll get in the struggle. But he did remind us sometime even in the struggle, we got to turn our face. To the wall, amen. Thank you, Pastor McDuffie, amen. If you was blessed tonight, I'm sure you'll be back tomorrow night and get it, and, and let's do it all over again, amen. Amen. It, it may have even been a struggle to get here tonight. I said it may have even been a struggle for some even to get here tonight because anytime you get ready to come to church and get ready to be blessed, the devil always show up. And said, I watch it online. I catch it here. Is, is it gonna be on Facebook? Is this Amen? But every now and then. Amen. You you remember, I'm not preaching, but you remember that lady that had that been over for twelve years. 18, 18 years, eighteen. Amen. The the Bible says not only not only did the Lord says uh, yeah, he did see it. Amen. And, and he told a woman that I lose, but before he did that, he touched her. And not, not only do we know God got power, but every now and then we want to be in his presence. Amen. 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 You, he can touch me without no, he can't touch you like he can touch you. When you're in the presence of the sanctuary, amen, in his house, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. I asked my children, could they sing tomorrow, but they got all kind of activities going on in school, amen. So we're going to honor that, amen. We're going to honor that tonight. And uh, so I, I, I think we're going to do it tomorrow night, 
Amen. No, maybe a struggle, but he just told us. <laughs> but God is in the struggle. Amen. And I, our inspirational choir will be back on Wednesday night to close this out. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for uh, our Reverend Coleman. Reverend Coleman, you want to say good evening to us? Amen. You good? You want to say good evening? Are you good? God bless you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Amen. We're in good timing tonight. Amen. And we're going to get ready to go down from this place. Amen. Again, we thank God for uh, Pastor McGovern and some of the family of the Taylor Hill Church family. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Virginia Ann, for uh, leaving the post office early to get here tonight. Amen. Thank you so kindly. Amen. God, God bless you. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, my friend and my brother, my, I got a young brother tonight. I, I, as I'm, I'm past 45 now, so I'm the old preacher. So I got the young preacher coming tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. He is a preacher by excellence. Amen. They watched him from the drums to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. In the presence of Pastor Darren Clay, the Shady Oak Baptist Church there in Collins, Mississippi. Amen. Will be our guest on, on tomorrow night. Come and be blessed. They say in the country where me and McDuffie are from, every round. Get a little bit high. Amen. <laughs> Come on, Pastor, and let us go. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Pastor Davis, and thank God for all these preachers here on tonight, and thank God for Taylor Hill coming, and my cousin, and all of you, First High Point. Truly, we thank the Lord for your pastor inviting me on tonight. Hope I said something that was beneficial, that will help us uh, in our journey along the way. Amen. Just remember, we're still in revival, and the Lord is still working some things out. So let us stand. We're getting ready to go. Amen. Let us stand. Just, 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 just say to yourself, the struggle is real, but God, good night.